Well, hello, hello, hello. Or we are back here with Kumar versus AI, and uh, we had here a very interesting game. I want to walk through the opening in particular. I feel like uh, there is a a prejudice afoot here. Kumar does not believe in playing C4. This is the big conspiracy. Why is that? Is it because it's the letter C? <laughs> there is some kind of a uh, aversion to moving the C pawn. And this is one of the great flaws of your opening style, I believe. And I feel it gets exploited in this game in a way which uh, is instructive. So hopefully you will learn from this. All right. So, all right, this E5 here is clearly not correct. What the computer prefers here is C3. You know, a solid structure. A more conservative structure where the knight would end up here and bishop here. Tight, tight packed core, you know. This is already kind of creating some weaknesses. When you have two pawns in the center, you typically want them to be together. Any deviation from that is typically weakening. But together, they stay strong. Okay, It's the same like the pawns in front of the king. You typically want them to stay together. Okay, It's like Maximus in the freaking gladiator. They don't want them to go ahead because then it's like, uh, oh shit. All right. So, now d5, it seems, is a bad move by our opponent. Uh, I don't know. I guess, preferably, he thinks you should challenge the pawn more directly. Uh, anyway, quickly, quickly, quickly. But, and here you end Passan. <laughs> And in fact, in this situation, you shouldn't have end facade. <laughs> yeah. But it's not necessarily so that you shouldn't have end facade. Not necessarily so. It ends up like this. This kind of structure. Where... Hmm, I guess you both could be contesting for the center. Okay? Two pawns versus two pawns. And in the previous setup, it's still two pawns versus two pawns, but you could kind of create this, this pawn chain, which is pretty robust, pretty nice. And this advanced pawn is typically really, really annoying because he controls these squares, which the knight loves to have. And the knight is the key defender of the king. And because the knight can't come here, but has to go somewhere else, uh, the king will forever be more vulnerable in such a game. Just imagine this bishop so happily can just come wherever he wants. Then you double him up with the queen and boom. All right. So you've got a lot of the flow. The lines are flavoring in this direction in a pleasant way. With the advanced pawn, this tends to happen. And uh, him moving this pawn already here earlier. It's, uh, you know, in a way that that helps you. In a way that helps you. It helps you in retrospect. Yeah. Had he not done D5, D5 but had he done D6 and challenged the spawn in the center, then it could have been a different setup. Very kind of different setup. Where the queens might even get traded off the board. Yeah. Anyway, so we end up like this, and now you play knight c3, which is, all right, computer likes it. Computer likes it, and it's fine. It is fine. It is fine. Uh, bishop here is also, it's not great. You see, this is the main problem here with this knight in front here, is you can't move your bishop here, so so easily because the knight comes in here and attacks it 
So you typically have to prepare such a move by making this move first and then you come here. But then again, if you're planning to play c4, then, uh, well, it doesn't really harm. It's okay to still play it through. But now, like this, uh, uh, it's playing okay. This is all okay stuff here. This is a juicy looking pawn at this in this brief moment. You know, it's a very juicy pawn as well as over here. The knight is almost guaranteed to have to move if you if you attack. So it's a spicy move, but you know he could defend against it relatively easily. Still, computer quite likes such an idea. Knight b5, creating pressure on this, and thinks queen b8 will be the likely response. Uh, but you chose casting, which is okay. No real difference. Now this pawn has come under attack and you've defended it with this style that you are so accustomed to using your bishop as a pawn. This is part of the Kumar flavor. This is your brand, basically. Your brand of weakness. Like every player has a style, right? And with every style comes chinks in the armor. This is your style. <laughs> uh, it's better than being flagrant with it. It's better to be rock solid and just wait for the enemy to make mistakes than to be, you know. But anyway, so so far so good. Things are going all right for you. Uh, and then you make this knight e2 move, which is a little bit cute, I guess. Computer suggests uh, rook here. The problem with knight out here is uh, the bishop becomes a bit more trappy after knight move here. I mean, not necessarily, but... Uh, hmm. Okay, and then he comes after your bishop, and uh, computer suggests that you just you know ignore the knight and just rearrange your pieces on this side, maybe try something like this. Um, which you went like this, and we got the bishop off the board for the knight, okay? And I think this is a key strategic ace for the opponent, which you typically should not allow. You should try to avoid it. I, I, I believe uh, c3 here is, is a mistake, okay? This is uh, not a kind of move that you should make. I, I'm sure the bishop could maybe even hide away or something. Uh, I don't know. I like, for example, I don't think this is too bad. This is not too bad. Uh, you do run into this kind of tempo problems. But uh, but it's not too bad. I prefer to keep the bishop alive, basically. Anyway, uh, what happened was this, and this created a weakness for you, which gets exploited. You see the, the light squared bishop reigns supreme on a board where all the pawns are on the dark squares. These dark squares are doing a good job of buffering this guy's deep threat against your rook. But this diagonal is pretty open. And that presents a big uh, challenge for you in this game. You get out the knight out the way, and he starts to pawn storm you. And this is a bit of a... Yeah, this is not... Yeah, okay, I see what you're trying to do is you're making room for the bishop while sort of pretending to attack. Uh, what the computer is saying is quite instructive. F4 is is kind of like the way to handle this. When when he starts to storm down against you, you gotta put something in the way, man. Like fucking put a block, put something. <laughs> Usually, very often it's like that. 
for example, in a fianchetto structure, you know, where you have pawn, pawn, pawn. Very often, the other guy's pawns will come in a tri in a straight line like this, defended, and then he'll break forward over here. And uh, once that happens, it becomes very difficult. Uh, so it's very often that you try to do this before that happens even at the expense of a pawn often so f4 in that situation would have been much better and uh, now you see how this bishop he just uh, you know messes with your mind bro he messes with your mind and uh, the game is slowly get, you're getting squeezed but uh, yeah Slowly getting squeezed, still hanging in there. It's a long game, long ass fucking game. I have to tell you that. After the queens got traded off, it was over. You have to make sure you don't lose the queen here. This queen's your only chance. You know, you try to do something, but uh, otherwise it's game over. So, rest of the game. I can't go further. Thank you.